Hello and welcome to this latest edition of Bulls on Parade Talk. I am your host, Joshua Sines. And today, I stumbled across something on statofthetexans.com that really intrigued me and something that I hadn't even thought about. And I actually forgot that this was this was a poss this could be it could have been a possibility until I read this article and then I like and then I'm like, huh. Okay. So anyway. <clears throat> I found an article on stateofthetexans.com, which will be in the description below, by Pat and and by Patrick D. Star. And shout out to him; he does a fantastic job writing these art writing these articles on stateofthetexans.com. He does a great he does a fantastic job. Um, but you know, he points he writes this, and I'm like, hmm. Huh. I, I, I can't, I don't see why not. I mean, um, but anyway. He basically titles his article, says, Could Matt Castle be an option for Houston? And that's interesting to me for a couple of reasons. Number one, first of all, um, Matt Castle decided to. First of all, I'm sure a, a lot of pe to a lot of people that follow the NFL, you all are already aware that Matt Castle decided to opt out of the final season with the Minnesota Vikings and decided to go in, and decided to test the free agent market. And he was supposed to make 4.7 million dollars in his last year. Well, apparently he wants more money. Um. And. Uh, Bob McNair is on record saying that he wants a veteran quarterback on the team, right? And you know, earlier in an earlier episode, I pointed out that I pointed out a rumor about Ryan Mallett potentially coming to Houston. You can go check that video out on my channel. Um, but Matt Castle could be another option. You know, um, especially with, especially considering the fact that, you know, Matt Castle, he has connections with both Bill O'Brien and Romeo Brown. I mean, think about it. Um, Bill O'Brien, as Patrick points out in this article, uh, Bill O'Brien was the wide receiver coach in New England when Matt Castle, in, two, in 2008, when, when, and that was the year Tom Brady got hurt, they put Matt Castle, and he had probably his best season ever. You know, um, Tom Brady went down with an ACL injury in the first game, in the first game of 2008, and then Matt Castle, and I, I went through the stats, I went, I went through his stats in an earlier episode when this, in an earlier video when discussing Bill O'Brien's offense, you know, just to give you a, just to give you a, just to, you know, just to throw out a couple numbers at you guys, um, with Matt Castle at the quarterback spot in 2008, uh, he had a career high completion percentage, 63.4% through 21 touchdowns. 11 interceptions, threw for um, 3,693 yards passing. And on top of it all, the Patriots won 11-5 and five that season. Something to think about. And like, and like I said, I broke down. And the, you, can, you can see the whole analysis of this potential, of this offense, of this offense and its potential in a previous episode. And so that's Bill o so that's what Bill O'Brien has connected with Matt Castle now. To, now think about this. Where did Matt Castle go after he was after he was in, in New England? Kansas City. He was the he was a starting quarterback in Kansas City. When Romeo Cornell was hired as the defensive coordinator in Kansas City, Matt Castle was the starting quarterback. And when, um, and you know when 
even when and when Romeo Fresnel was given the head coaching job, Matt Castle was still the starter. So basically, so there is definitely familiarity with those two as well, with those two coaches and Matt Castle as well. You know, so who knows? I mean, this. I mean, the, the I mean Ryan Mallett's a possibility because you know, um, I, I pointed this out in in an earlier episode that um, Ryan Mallett was drafted when Bill O'Brien was the offensive coordinator, and then Matt Castle. Matt Castle knows Bill O'Brien and Romeo Cornell, so a lot of familiarity around the league is something. And with and and uh, he's a free agent, you know. It's not like he's a, it's not like he's still in a it's not like he's stuck or he's not like he's um, it's not like he can't go anywhere. He has the he he decided to opt out to go wherever he wants. Only thing is, we have to pay him more than four point seven million, and we only have three point five in cap space. So let's make some room. Bring bring in the veteran. But it, it it also leaves you the but so that so that makes you wonder. You know, um, are the Texans going to do what the Redskins did with the RG three draft? Are they going to draft another young quarterback, in Kirk, like Kirk Cousin? Or are they going to have? Because because think about this for a minute. I've already pointed out that um, Matt Schaub is out for sure. It's the word it's the, that's what the word is. I'm sure everyone's saying that. I'm sure everyone is in agreement with that. Matt Schaub's days in Houston are done. But also makes you wonder. That leaves TJ Yates and Case Keenum. Right? So, what do you do with TJ? Do you let him go too? I'm guessing they will. I'm guessing TJ's days in Houston are done. That's my guess. That's my guess. So, I think you only have Case Keenum on the roster. Case Keenum would be the only quarterback left in Houston. So that leaves room for two guys. The quarterback you take in the draft, a veteran, and Case, who's now entering, who will now, who will now be entering his third year in the National Football League. So um, if you bring in a so you bring in a veteran like Matt Castle or Ryan Mallett, you know, Matt Castle it, Matt Castle is the is the is the free agent. Ryan Mallett, Ryan Mallett's still under contract in New England. But I'm just saying, you know, you bring a guy that has experience. Now, Matt Castle's been a starting quarterback. That's the one advantage he has over Ryan Mallett. Ryan Mallett's been backing up Tom Brady since he got there. He hasn't seen any action except preseason. But you know, you bring in a so that's why I believe the Matt Castle thing is more is more realistic. Because he actually has experience starting in this league. So he could actually come in and who has been under Bill O'Brien's tutelage to a degree uh, and is familiar with Romeo Cornell's way of doing things. You know, um, he could be like a mentor for, uh, for the young guy that we draft. And even to a guy like Kate, you know? So like I said, um, the so like I said, the the issue is the four point seven million. You know, apparently he wants the thing. The thing with Matt Castle is he wants to be a starter. That's the thing about Matt. He believes he's a starting quarterback. So and he wants to make more than four point seven million. And, and, you know, with the cap space that Houston has, that's not possible at the moment. He's not, he comes to Houston, he's not going to make that kind of money. He's not going to make that kind of money unless we get rid of a lot of people. Because we only have, I, th I think, the, number we, uh, the cap number we have in Houston I think is around like 3.5, 3.7, something like that. So... And... So, you know, we get rid of Matt Schaub. So, 
I pointed this out. We, I, and I've already pointed this out. We get rid of Matt Schaub on June first and past that, we get ten million dollars in free in free cap space. But if we get rid of him now, we only get three million in cap space because of the money that's because of what because of the because of what's on his contract. So, Matt Castle wants to be a starter, but the Texans want a long term solution. Want a guy? Want to want wants to, wants to bring a young guy in for the long term solution. But you know, to have a guy on the roster that has experience, depth, you know, be a mentor to the young guy, so that I can so that he can kind of help him along, I wouldn't mind that. So, Patrick, Mister. Mr. Patrick D. Starr believes the Texans should bring him on as a as a as a free agent, you know, when free agency starts. So, um, I'm all for it. Now, like I said, he, I would not mind. You know, like I said, Matt Schaub's gone. TJ's potentially gone. I believe. So all you're left with is Case Keenum. You bring in, um, you bring in a guy like Matt Castle. You draft a quarterback. I think we're only going to draft one quarterback, unless you know we go with, unless we go the Washington route where they drafted RG three and Kirk Cousins, which is fine with me too. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. All that all that is good business. All that is good business. But you know, I take a less you, you I take a lesson from Seattle and Seattle built their team through the draft and they won the Super Bowl this year. So, you know, I would not mind if we drafted another quarterback along with the along with the young quarter, along with another young quarterback. So, two in the draft or one in the draft, one in free agency and we keep case. All that's fine. That's all good business. I, I would not mind that one bit. Not at all. So, um, I can definitely see that happening. I don't mind it. I think it's a good, I think it's a good business deal. Now, free agency is a ways away, but so we have yet to see. Free agency is a ways away. Um, but you know, we can cut, you know, we can, we can, or we can already decide to let players go. I mean, we already saw the Atlanta Falcons cut Asante Samuel. So, you know, um, so we can make moves now if we wanted to in terms of cutting players. So we'll see. We'll see. Definitely quite a culture change to be, to be going around Houston Definitely something I, 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 I myself cannot wait to see. And I can't wait to, to see and to share with all of you guys. You know, and so he, Matt Castle is, is definitely a Bill O'Brien like Bill O'Brien quarterback. And speaking of, of uh, Bill O'Brien quarterbacks, as in conclusion, I want to conclude with this. You know, um,. One website I definitely recommend you guys check out is draftbreakdown.com. There's a, there's you have the list of pros there's they they give you a list of prospects. You got video, you got you got videos on these prospects, you got mock drafts, and you got this guy Nick Page writing these very nice articles. One in particular that I want that I that I must point out is something that I have been saying from the very beginning. And, he, and it's one article, and I'll leave the link in the description below. Is Bridgewater a Bill O'Brien quarterback? And basically, if you read the whole article, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, and I'll, I'll, and I'll have, I'll have you guys read it. If you want me to talk about it, I'll do it in a, late, in a later video, but I won't right now. But basically, you read this article, and Teddy Bridgewater's skill set fits Bill O'Brien. 
which is something I have been saying from the very beginning. Bill O'Brien looks for a quarterback. Not only, not only, you know, everyone makes a big deal about Bill O'Brien is a Bill, Bill O'Brien never recruited anyone anyone that was under six foot three, two hundred pounds. They make all of they make all they make everything about you know the size. And I'll admit it, I was one of those guys that when I read when I saw that he's a fan of big size quarterbacks, I thought he was really in love with a guy like Blake Bortles. You know, I said um, Blake Bortles is raw mechanics wise, and Teddy Bridgewater is the most polished, most consistent, most accurate quarterback in this draft class. He. But you know, just forget the fact that he's six foot one, hundred. I think what one hundred ninety six pounds, something like that. Um, I I think it's six six foot one. I'm I'm not I'm not one hundred percent sure, but um, you know, Teddy Bridgewater to me. And, and I can't, I can't stand it when people use strength of schedule against him. It's not fair, you know. If anything, guys like, I mean, think about this. Think about this. Guys like Mark Sanchez, Matt Barkley, um, Carson Palmer, um, AJ McCarron, they all sat behind. Huge offensive line. So they were surrounded by the best linemen, best wide receivers, best tight ends, you know, best skill players. Teddy Bridgewater had what? And, you know, they all say strength of schedule. That's an insult to teams like UCF. UCF won the conference and went to a bowl game and beat Baylor, even though Baylor, you know, their defense was very questionable. But, you know... Teddy Bridgewater, and you know, that almost discredits my alma mater, the University of Houston, because the University of Houston led college football in turnover margin. We caused turnovers like crazy. It, it was something that was, that was incredible for me to watch. And you know, um, the games that Houston played, and just a quick, just a quick little note, Houston, the University of Houston, um, when we played um, UCF and Louisville, those were close games. Those were close games. You know, we were a very formidable heart. We were a very formidable defense. Now consider that our offense sputtered throughout the season, but you know, it's the, what's what happens when you have a true freshman quarterback. And that's a topic, and that, and that, and this is, this is, um, but anyway, and that, that's a, that's a, that's a topic for another, for another um, podcast, another, 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 for University of Houston series that I might be doing next season. Who knows? But <sighs> Teddy Bridgewater's got everything you want that Bill O'Brien asks for. You know, he's got mobility. He can make all the throws. He's accurate making all the throws. You know, he rem you look at you look at guys that Bill O'Brien has coached, especially Tom Brady, and then his most his his latest um, his latest um, Penn State quarterback Christian Hackenberg. You know, the Christian Hackenberg, 6'4", 220-ish pounds, you know, but you know, despite the fact, like I, like I said, despite the fact that um, Bill O'Brien is on record saying that he likes bigger, bigger, big quarterbacks. And these draft people are saying the same thing, have said the same thing. You know, and 
And uh, there's a lot of talking that, you know, Blake Bortles has received some praise from Bill O'Brien, especially considering the fact that he's been coached by George O'Leary. Right? But, you know... And 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 I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not uh, saying that Blake Bortles is not a potential guy for Houston. No 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 no. I'm just saying that, and, and you know all of all of that all of that you can find on my on my channel. You know I've done videos where I'm comparing four quarterbacks and two quarterbacks. Um. But I've already been said I would take Teddy, if 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 not Jadavion, give me Teddy. And this guy, and this guy in this article, Nick Page proves my point. Solidifies everything. It's on film. This guy he does a good job analyzing things, comparing you know Bill O'Brien's systems to Teddy Bridgewater's skill set. You know, and what and something that Bill O'Brien would ask of his quarterbacks to do, Teddy Bridgewater can do it all. I don't care how big he is. Oh, I don't care how I don't care how big or small he is. I don't care about any of that. He has the skill set. If not Jadavion, number one overall. Who is the better athlete? Who is the better overall? Who is the better? Who is the best athlete? Um, the best player, I should say. I'm sorry, not athlete. The best player. When you know you're when when grading these guys by by several x by several draft guys. Give me Teddy. If not Jadavion, give me Teddy. Bring Mac, bring a guy like Matt Castle in, or bring another young guy, or bring another young guy from the draft, and develop them both. And let's develop all three guys. You know, whatever works for Bill O'Brien, let's do it and see what happens. I'm all for Matt Castle. I am definitely all in for Teddy Bridgewater coming to Houston. I would, I that would be great. Bring in Teddy or Jadavion. One of those two. If we keep the number one pick, and we're still in February. We're still in February, people. Um, if we keep the top pick, the number one overall pick, Jadavion or Teddy. Give me one of those two, and I'm happy. And I will be happy, personally. What do you guys think? But that's me. But what do you guys think? Um, on the Matt Castle situation, do you guys? What well, What do you think about Matt Castle? Would he be a good fit in Houston? Would you want him here in Houston? How would you react if we actually made the move to bring him into Houston? Would you want him here, or would you rather, you know, do do the Washington route, where they drafted two young quarterbacks and they developed them both? You know, what do you think is? Um, we know Matt Schaub is gone. What do you think is going to happen to TJ and Case? Do you think they're going to stay? How many quarterbacks do you think you have? Tell me in the comments section. Tell me in the comments section. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Be sure to leave a like on this channel. I much appreciate it. I'll subscribe, subscribe to this channel for more Houston Texans videos. I'm here 365 days a year covering the Houston Texans, bringing you guys as much up-to-date information and speculation about anything I hear Houston Texans-wise, bringing you guys my insight about certain things, certain topics, certain players, certain ideas, certain developments. And I would love to hear back from you guys. This has been another episode of Bulls on Parade Talk. I'm your host, Joshua Sines, signing off.